Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. Woo, Thursday, day before Friday. We all love Friday. So this week has been interesting. Um, my goodness, March. March 10th. Where has the... Where has the world... Where has the month gone? I feel like... <clears throat> It's just going by, and I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I'll tell you what you do. You draw every day, right? Well, this week I had kind of a, a curveball thrown at me. And, um, you know, as independent contractors or freelance people, you know, we all prepare for, you know, the doomsday when, you know, your main... Freelance client um, no longer needs you. Oh, no, no, not that. You know, they use you for years, and then suddenly it's like, well, <sighs> don't have any money left. And, you know, these are things that, uh, you know, you got to kind of prepare for. I, um, you know, I went to, uh, I went to my freelance client position, and, you know, I kind of heard uh, rumblings, and the plain fact of the matter is, you can't put all your eggs in one basket, you know? As much as who is paying you at the time would like you to, be like, no, we'll take care of you, we'll take care of you, it's fine. No, you, you can't really do that. And the same thing holds true for pretty much any job, you know, even if it's a nine to fiver. What you need to realize is, they are motivated by profit and bottom line and, and if it's a large company you know their shareholders you know their bottom line whatever they look on they have analysts come in and you know they they do things they analyze of course because that's your job and you know if they deem that what you're doing is too costly then it's going to be downsized and those things golly man those things happen that's why you should always have more than one fire burning, in terms of art-wise, at one time. <clears throat> and a very wise person, artist that I follow by the name of Steven Silver has been a, a huge advocate of this. You have, you know, you have a fire burning for a while, you tender, you know, you, you take care of it, you know, and then you start another fire over here and you take care of it here and you get another fire over here and fire being of course a metaphor for art jobs and and you know just projects you always should be working on your own stuff and always uh, here's here's the reality of it you should never ever 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 rely on one source especially as a freelancer for income and you know that is completely true Especially in today's day and age, you can't predict, you know, what's going to happen from one day to the next. And, um, you know, be a good manager of your money, of course, and, and don't go out and make ignorant, stupid expenditures. And, you know, don't get leveraged uh, into a payment plan situation to which you cannot handle. And, you know, we as, as freelancers, you know, a lot of people have, not people, whenever I used to work at a, a 9 to 5 job, I was always, you know, kind of criticized for having extra curricular activities. Oh, Mike, why don't you just give yourself to the company? Just give yourself to the company. We'll, we'll reward you. We'll take care of you. You, 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 you know, you, you just you, you give yourself to the, to the company. And, uh, you know, and I, and I always thought to myself, how ludicrous are you? Why should I attach myself to a company that, you know, at the end of the day, I don't own, <laughs> you know, I don't own and I don't make the decisions for the company, so why should I give my entire life to you? And you know, it, it worked to my disadvantage and I'll be honest with you, you know, there are certain times whenever I really, I, I kind of regret, um, you know, walking away from a, a, a career position that I had been at for, golly. A long time and I helped build the company and you know the best that I could 
um, you know, millions of dollars that were involved. And but my passion has always been, you know, for somewhere else, you know, doing my own thing. And and you know, it's I don't know if it's an entrepreneurial spirit inside of me, but I love new ideas. You know, I've always been a proponent of coming up with your own ideas and and fostering those into something that has, you know, legs in the world. And, you know, whenever I worked at Disney, and, you know, that's, by the way, the freelance client that, uh, you know, unbeknownst to some of their internals, they, um, you know, they, they kind of, they cut their budget a little bit and you know they their freelance base kind of fell off which is completely fine you know they're a business and that is you know the nature of the business and and there's such good people over there and, and it kind of broke my heart because I I saw a lot of other freelance artists that were kind of freaking out and at the end of the day you know you just you gotta have your own thing dudes you know you gotta have you know, whatever, you know, whether it's your own company, your own, um, you know, your own t-shirt business, your own graphics business, you know, you gotta have more than one fire going on. You can't be relying upon one entity for your entire livelihood. And that should be true for all um, artistic, uh, you know, whether or not you work for a studio, because I gotta be honest with you guys, those of you working with a studio thinking that you're safe from the hatchet, uh, you're, you're wrong. You know, I, I, I have spoke to many a, a studio artist, you know, over the past, um, you know, year in them iterating, golly, it was, you know, it was doomsday. You know, I've been working with a company for 11 years and I'm so angry, I'm so angry. Why are you angry? It's a business, dude. You, you are a commodity. You're, you're, you, you know, you work for a big studio, you are a commodity. You sell, you know, your services and they pay for the services. And at the end of the day, if your services are A too expensive, then, you know, that's the way it is. If you own the company and you realize that your overhead was way too out of control, no matter, no matter what, you know, what you were doing at the time, whether you're, you know, extremely successful it doesn't it doesn't really matter you just need to look at the whole situation and say golly you know maybe I shouldn't have just put all my eggs in one basket you know maybe you know now could things change yes everything can change golly I mean you know phones you get a phone call tomorrow and you know everything changes but at the end of the day a good attitude will get you where you need to go you know, a good attitude, having, having uh, a great attitude, having, a, you know, it's not just about attitude. It's, it's, you know, being creative and being a resource. And, you know, if something happens, don't be a butthole about it. You know, I'm sure uh, after this whole thing happened, a lot of people were buttholes. And, and it happens, you know, in multiple businesses. I heard of an animation studio, a game studio closing. <coughs> And, you know, you think to yourself, gosh, all those people that, you know, sacrifice nights and, and uh, you know, time away from their families and, you know, are you going to get a gold star for all that? No. You're not going to get anything for it except for the paycheck that you agreed to be compensated for. That's why you need to foster your own thing. The only person who has control of your destiny is you. You can quit. You can go and do your own thing. You know, you can you can work at a nine to fiver. It's whatever you want to do. And the more and more that I, I, I'm doing this thing, the more I realize um, I'm in control, you know? Of course, there. You know, if you're if you're a man or woman of faith, you have that to lean on. Um, and I'm not going to say uh, either or. Otherwise, it's not my place. You know, um, 
I am a man of faith, so I've got I've got my faith to lean on, and that is a comfort for me. Um, it's not for everybody. Um, you know, whenever this particular thing happened, I was like, oh my gosh. Okay, take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Take a step back. You know, and then I thought, you know what? This is awesome. <laughs> you know, a lot of people would be like, what are you talking about? You are you on dope? Are you on dope? You got to be on dope, man. No, I'm not. The, the, the plain fact of the matter is, this is an opportunity. You know, I've been wanting to have time to do, um, to do, uh, you know, learn a new program, to, things will happen. I'll get other clients. That's the thing. You gotta, you gotta think, eh, I'm gonna get other clients. You know, I, I have the resources, you know, if you, you know, I have my faith, I have, uh, you know, I have some contacts and I'll just keep working hard. And if you have a good attitude about it and put a smile on your face, man, will bad things happen? Heck yeah. Um, but, you know, I've prepared to weather the storm. I, I have, you know, I have enough in reserves, you know, to last me, uh, uh, not, you know, a year, but, you know, if it comes, if it really comes down to it and I need to go down and I need to get a job doing whatever, I don't care whatever, whatever, <clears throat> you know, making up the ends and, and doing what I have to do, then that's fine. If it's for a season, it's not the end of the world. The only thing that you can really be unhappy about is if somebody dies, you know, but whenever it comes to, or you have a horrible health issue that involves losing of a loved one, you know, but you have a broken car, a big freaking deal. You have a, which I have had, I've had broken cars. Let me tell you something. In the past month, if you had looked at what my situation was, and you would be like, dang. <laughs> That's all I got to say is, dang. You know, you got a good attitude, dang. You know, what, what, what gives you the right to have such a good attitude about life? Because I choose to. You know, whenever you choose a righteous path, or you choose a path of positivity, or you choose a path that uplifts your environment and those around you, People notice, dude. You know, <clears throat> people notice. And with that being said, you, you gotta realize that, you know, life goes on. <laughs> you know, you're gonna get through whatever situation you're having. You're gonna get through whatever um, calamity has suddenly been thwarted, or not thwarted, been, been rushed upon you. You're gonna get through it. and. Afterwards, you're going to talk to yourself and you're going to say, why was I so freaking worried, dude? You know? That's the thing. Prepare yourself for the things that you cannot see. And when they come, it's not going to be a surprise. I knew full well and good that, you know, my gig with uh, with a large studio would probably come to an end either by fault of my own or by a situation that I had no control over. And lo and behold, a situation that I had no control over came about and boom, the gig that I had for two years is gone. What I'd like to say, you know, if, if any of the Disney people end up watching this, is my goodness, you guys have been a blessing to me and my family. What an incredible opportunity I had, you know, even if it was for a short time, to experience what you experience every day. You know, I think that uh, the things that that company does in terms of creativity are phenomenal. And I think that uh, hopefully, you know, in the future, that I'll be able to somehow get back and uh, be a resource for them again. In the meantime, I think that, um, you know, I, as an artist, have been given a unique opportunity because now I have the experience of being there, but now also, you know, I have, uh, I just have the, the, the enjoyment of being around wonderful, creative people. And it puts things into perspective, because whenever you're a freelancer, it really, you basically, <clears throat> you're by yourself, dude. <laughs> so, anyway, 
This particular drawing goes along with the um, the uh, March of the Robots, um, you know, doing a pirate robot. Um, it's just some fun. That's all it is. It's just fun. You know, something that I can kind of take my mind off of. You know, the day's uh, situation. You know, I've got I've got a few things that I can do today, but on the whole, I'm not mired down by jobs. You know, like I once was. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, what I've basically done is rough out you know the gesture, and I'm getting down to the the details that I think are necessary um, before I go to ink. So basically, I, you know, I'll create the legs and. And, and what I've noticed too about some of the people that you know draw um, and, and do robots and do you know characterizations and, and are, don't have a lot of experience in it is they don't really understand the concept of form and how the form you know has depth and it has width and height and and uh, you know they're basically always drawing these straight lines and, and and they're wondering well why doesn't my drawing look like your drawing well at the end of the day your drawing doesn't look like my drawing is because, you know, number one, I practice a ton and I'm always trying to learn something a little bit new and I'm always using reference and I'm always using um, different materials and just really trying to experience this drawing thing to its highest degree. And, you know, from storytelling perspective to, um, you know, technique perspective, you know, how can I make it? I can make it a little bit better every single time I do something and that's what I'm that's what I'm after you know um, I, I'm interested in in doing a good job but also I'm interested in in kind of sewing back into you know what I'm doing so my advice to you you wonderful people you whoever you are in the drawing land that is you is not only to practice every day, but you know, read. Go read. I, I looked at a, a post from a novice, you know, somebody really enthusiastic, and they had kind of a a novice attitude about this whole drawing thing. And they said, "How do I?" And you know, please excuse my voice because every single time I see this, I kind of have to put a voice to it. You know, I'm sure that's not what they sound like, but it was like, "How do I draw?" the human form without having to look at reference all the time. I want to do it from memory. So, of course, being the sarcastic person that I tend to be sometimes, I said, well, I said, you know, there's a big red easy button in front of you and it's labeled use reference and practice. And of course, that wasn't the right thing to say. I'll be the first to admit it. You don't say stuff like that to people that are, you know, not professionals. They don't understand. I mean, at the end of the day, they're just trying, they have a love and a fervor. They don't understand what's going on. They don't have the tools in their toolbox to, you know, to do this stuff. And that was not the right thing for me to say. But then, of course, I corrected and said, you know, even the most seasoned veteran of artists still uses some form of reference. You know, Michelangelo, you know, used live reference and he did uh, preliminary paintings and drawings before he started, you know, his paintings and Leonardo did the same thing. And you really, you know, you really, obviously the goal is, oh, I don't want to draw from reference, but my goodness, it's there, use it. So that is that, that is that. I, I you know, I'm not, I'm not going to say that I'm, the best at what I do. I am going to say that I'm one of the most enthusiastic and open books ready to learn. <laughs> you know, you want to correct me? Correct me. I love correction. The reason why I love correction so much is because daggum, I can learn how to do it right. And then the next time I come at it, I won't have the same issues, you know, insanity is you know, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. I think a lot of us do that. You keep sitting down at the drawing table and you keep doing the same thing, dude. 
same thing over and over and over again, and you're expecting a different result. The thing is, if it's not working, change it up. Use a different, you know, utensil, pen, utensil. Use, you know, different subject matter. Use um, something different. That's the thing with this. You got to try. I, of course, you know, some guys or some of you guys know that I'm a teacher. I, I teach um, kindergarten through 12th grade. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Kindergartners. And I am completely, continually dumbfounded by the incredible creativity that comes out of some of these kids. You know, at their, at their age, I didn't have, you know, a, uh, an artist that had been in the industry, you know, for 15, 16, 17 years. I mean, we had teachers that had been teachers, art teachers that, you know, had basically gone directly from school and they were teaching right out of a book. And, you know, we didn't have that. I didn't actually obtain access to people that had been in the industry until I went to uh, college. And whenever I went to college, holy Moses, what a big difference in attitude of teaching. Um, but I just am always dumbfounded by the creativity of some of these uh, individuals at the school. And, you know, some of them obviously are just like stumps. But on the same tongue, that stump is just ready to be, you know, formed, ready to be cut. You have to find a way as a teacher to basically teach them. It is up to you. You know, if you can't reach somebody because of them being stubborn and them choosing not to learn from you, that is different than you basically not coming up with a methodology to get through to them. If you've, if you've tried everything, you know, that's one thing. But you need to find a way to carve that stump into something that, you know, shines beautiful because everybody has a degree of creativity in them and everybody has worth and value. You know, I don't care where you came from, I don't care what you do, you have worth and value. And especially as a young individual, my goodness, you know, it has been such an incredible honor to be able to teach and pass on some of these concepts, you know, even if I can direct them just a little bit. I mean, we have a path, you know, and we're, we're going down the path, and if I can just kind of nudge them, that nudge causes the rest of their life to be on a different path and possibly, you know, be a life changer. I can remember a few teachers in my life that did this. And that to me, that to me, my goodness, that to me is, is worth, you know, the sacrifice um, teachers make. So I think today has been a good, uh, a good video. Um, you know, of course, unfortunate things happen in your lives. Um, it is always a choice to be positive. Um, you know, do I have other opportunities that I could choose to go to? Yeah, but there, there's something inside of me, you know, from my faith to, um, to experience, to just knowing the way the, the business works. You know, I will end up working for, um, you know, the Walt Disney Company again, uh, whether it be in a full-time capacity as a character artist or an animator or something, uh, or a product designer or something in those, you know, that genre, because it, it just, it, it fit, you know? I, I really enjoyed doing the, uh, you know, the characters and designing the toys and, and uh, you know, what I did has value. So eventually that door will open again and I'll walk through it. And uh, who knows um, how wide it'll open. But I just wanted to, you know, give a shout out to all the Disney guys and girls um, that, uh, you know, when you have somebody like me that comes in and just watches and, and just enjoys, you know, the uh, the camaraderie and, and stuff um, of that particular environment, it really fosters and inspires me to become a better person as an artist. So... Anyway, this particular drawing is going to be inked and it's going to be painted, well, markered. Um, and uh, I will probably end up offering this as well as 
other drawings um, that I've done, uh, and I'll probably put them up for sale. Um, you know, I've done uh, you know, Rocket the Raccoon, some elephants. Um, oh yeah, see I got him. I enjoyed doing him. He was a video. So, um, and I, I really want to foster this too. I really like this concept of the alligator, and he kind of goes on adventures, and I really like that a lot. Um, so, anyway, um, the March of the Robots. Hopefully, I'll have some really cool uh, concepts this month. And uh, as always, you know, I, I don't require anything when you watch my videos. How could you? I mean, how stupid is that? I mean, some people actually charge for you to watch their videos. I don't. I just want to be an inspiration to those who, um, you know, who watch, you know. So anyway, God bless everybody, and go and draw something today. You know, spend, I always, I got a friend of mine who, who you know, of course I already explained this in some of the earlier videos, I don't want to draw anything unless I'm making money at it. Well, that's kind of the wrong attitude because you will, you will if you sew into that grand archive that is your brain. And, you know, suddenly after, you know, 50 drawings, you know, somebody's been watching and be like, I want to take you on as a character designer. I've been watching you on YouTube. Or, you know, I've been watching you on LinkedIn. And your posts are great. They inspire me to be a better person and an artist and blah, 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 blah. And you're like, well, I had no idea. No, you don't. No, you don't. You know? So go out today. Spend 10 minutes. Spend 5 minutes. Spend 20 minutes. I don't care. Spend time drawing and experiencing that love and passion that you have for this particular, you know, artistic medium. Okay? God bless, and I'm going to do a time lapse to finish. We'll see you next time.